All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, we're going to talk. The plan tonight is to talk about penalty enforcement. Presentation is broken up into like two separate parts. The, the first part, we're just going to talk about basic stuff. All right. I don't, we're not going to get too in depth with any of those things. I don't have any quizzes for anybody in the first half of the presentation. Uh, but we're going to talk about the really the, the basic stuff about penalty enforcement, uh, talk about some commonly called fouls, and then start getting into some of the more complicated things fouls on tries and extra periods illegal touching of kicks and how that impacts, impacts enforcement, timing fouls, things that are unusual, how does into replay factor in all this, and then mechanics. So about halfway through, well, a little before halfway through, I'm gonna have you join a game to answer some of these questions, but not right now. We're not gonna start there. We'll start with the layups. That's where I wanna start. Make sure we're all on the same page with the layups. So the basic enforcement principles. We're gonna talk about dead ball and interval fouls. We know that every penalty for penalties for every dead ball foul are administered separately and in the order of their occurrence. Except a dead ball UNS or personal foul by both teams, uh, if they occur before they're or, and they're both reported to the referee and none of the penalties have been completed, they'll be yardage penalties will be canceled. So one penalty by one team could offset five or more by the other team in this circumstance. We've completed the penalty. Uh, we would enforce the next penalty. Our interval fouls or penalties for fouls occur between the end of the fourth period and the start of the extra period, or between possession series and an extra period, uh, and just between extra periods. We will always enforce those from the 25-yard line to start the next possession series. So those are our interval fouls. Simple as uh, a UNS on a coach after they don't, he doesn't get something that they wanted at the end of the fourth quarter or between the overtime series or whatever. Okay, so that's the, easy, again, easy so far. So let's talk about the, the four play types, forward pass plays, interval between the snap and the end of the pass, basic spot for fouls on uh, forward pass plays is the previous spot. Know that if we have a, pers a, forward, a personal foul or unsportsmanlike conduct penalty new this year, that's why it's in yellow, UNS against B on a forward pass play, it can be enforced from the end of the last run as long as the run ends beyond the neutral zone and there's no change of possession during the down. So if we can check both of those boxes, we will tack that on uh, to the to the end of the uh, to the to the dead ball spot. Missing one of those missing one of those criteria for a team B personal foul or UNS, we have to go previous spot. So here are some examples. Second and seven at A's thirty five at the snap B seventy five is flagged for DH against uh, A sixty one at A's at the thirty six yard line. A nine is passed. A eighty one is incomplete in the first scenario, or it's caught in the second scenario. Uh, in either case, he's tackled for a gain. Uh, he's tackled for a gain of. Uh, he's tackled to 50 if it's if it's caught. Well, we know if it's incomplete. The only place to enforce that penalty is the previous spot. So that's going to be a simple first and ten at the 45. Uh, but uh, because this is not a personal foul, right? Holding is not a personal foul. That also means the only enforcement spot is the previous spot. So it would be better for B in the second situation to just flat decline the penalty, take the result of the play. By contrast. If we have a uh, face mask foul here prior to the pass and the pass is caught and then fumbled and the ball rolls to the B25 yard line where it's recovered either A by the offense or B by the defense, well, it's recovered by the offense since it's a personal foul, they can tack that on, right? They can go half the distance to the goal from the end of the, from the dead ball spot and it'll be first and goal or first and 10 at the 12 and a half. But because we had a change of possession during the down in the second scenario where B recovered it, the only enforcement spot option is the previous spot, 15 yards, automatic first down. So everybody, I assume, is good with that. Cool. Moving right along. I said I don't want to spend too much time on the, on the layups. So let's talk about free kick plays. All right, a free kick play is just simply the interval between the ball, the time the ball is kicked on a free kick down and the end of the kick. Again, the basic spot of enforcement is the previous spot. Uh, some exceptions to that are a foul by the kicking team during that interval can be enforced at the spot where the dead ball belongs to be, but obviously only if the dead ball belongs to be, right? If the dead ball doesn't belong to be, our only option for enforcement is the previous spot. Here are some examples. Free kick at the 35, prior to catching the kick at the five yard line, B42 is flagged for blocking below the waist against a kicking team player at B's 40 yard line. B9 returns the kick all the way to A's 40. Well, this is a B foul. It happened before the kick was over. And it's not one of our two special B fouls that have enforcement during free kicks that I'll talk about later. 
So that means the only enforcement option here is a re-kick with a 15 yard penalty. So all we're gonna do is go back to previous spot, go 15 yards, free kick at the 50. Because I'm sure A does not want B to start first and 10 at A's 40. All right, here's a safety kick at the 20. Uh, A13 is flagged for kickoff, uh, for being offsides on the kick. B9 catches the kick at the 15, returns it to B's 40, where he's either tackled or he fumbles. And in the case that he fumbles, it's recovered by A. Well, if he's tackled, then B can tack that offsides on to the end of the kick. And they just move it up five yards, be first and 10 for B at the 45. However, if B is not in possession at the end of the down, like they are in the second example, the only enforcement option for that uh, OFK is the previous spot, making it a free will re kick at the 15 yard line. Cleared everybody on that as well, I hope. Cool. Scrimmage kick plays. Again, just like free kick plays, the difference here is that we start with the snap on a scrimmage kick and not when the ball's kicked, but we'll go from the snap till the kick ends. The basic spot on scrimmage kick plays depends on what the type of foul is. If it's a non PSK foul, the basic spot of enforcement is the previous spot. If it does meet the pro scrimmage kick criteria, which I'll talk about here in a minute, then the basic enforcement spot is the post scrimmage kick spot, which is generally speaking, the end of the kick. Fouls by A, just like on free kick plays, can be enforced at the spot where the dead ball belongs to B. So that is always, again, an option on the scrimmage kick play. Here are some examples. Fourth and 12 at the A34. At the snap, we have a, a defensive hold for a pull and shoot. A14's kick is caught by B5 at the 20 and returned to the 50 before he steps out of bounds. Well, that is not a post scrimmage kick foul, specifically as we talked about, well, it's a different meeting. But the, the pull and shoot here is basically the only kind of holding that we would have that would meet defensive holding criteria that, we, that we've started to talk about and how the rules have changed around that. So that's gonna be simply enforced at the previous spot. And it's gonna be an automatic first down now. So it'll be first and 10 for A at A's 44 in this case, because we, we don't meet PSK criteria. So our only option is to enforce that penalty um, at the previous spot. Here we have another we have another scrimmage kick, A snap in the ball at their own 15. We have a flag for illegal formation for five players in the backfield. The kick is caught at B's 40 and returned to A's 45. Well, in this case, since it's a foul by the kicking team, B's going to tack that onto the end of the kick, make it first and 10 at the 40. Again, I'm going to come back to post scrimmage kick foul. So remember that we're going to talk about that later. Running plays is everything else. You know, we got our forward pass plays, our free kick plays, our scrimmage kick plays. If it doesn't meet one of those criteria for those plays, it's a running play. Each separate run segment on a run play has its own basic spot. All right. And the basic spot for each of those, if the run ends behind the neutral zone, is the previous spot. If the run ends beyond the neutral zone, we're going to enforce that penalty from the end of the related run. Here are some examples of that. Third and five at A's 30. A24 takes the handoff and runs around the left end. B73 grabs and pulls his face mask at either A28, A's 28, which is in the backfield, or B, A's 35. A24 fumbles at that spot and the ball rolls to A's 37, where it's recovered by B62. Well, since the first run ended behind the neutral zone, right? That's where the run ended, where he lost, where he fumbled. We'll go back to the previous spot and enforce that penalty 15 yards from there, making it first and 10 at the 45 yard line. In the second example, since the run ended beyond the neutral zone, we're gonna tack that onto the spot of the fumble. So it's basically a five yard difference in enforcement. Uh, another example, second and 12 of B's 48, A31's running with the ball at the 40 when he fumbles. During A31's run, B61 holds, defensive holding, uh, A74. Fumble is recovered by A81 at B's 35, and A81 is tackled at B's 32. Well, this run, this foul occurred during the run segment that ended with the fumble at the 40, right? So the recovery in advance, they can't have both the recovery and advance and the penalty. In this particular example, it's better for A to take the enforcement of the penalty from the end of the run because it's a two yard, it's two yards better than the dead ball spot. So obviously there's a different factor here if a first down was potentially, an automatic first down was potentially involved with this defensive hold. But in this example, it was gonna be a first down anyway. 
So that's not terribly important. Questions about any of that stuff? All right, cruising right along. Uh, the three and one principle only applies if the enforcement spot is not indicated in the statement of the penalty. For example, the, if the penalty says it's enforced the previous spot, three and one doesn't apply, like a legal touching by an ineligible receiver, by an uh, originally ineligible receiver, previous spot. Well, either kind of either type of legal touching is previous spot enforcement, but I digress. Basically, we will enforce any uh, foul by the opponent beyond uh, or behind the basic spot from the basic spot. A foul by the team in possession beyond the basic spot from the basic spot, but we will enforce penalties by the team in possession behind the basic spot from the spot of the foul with obviously myriad exceptions that I'm about to talk about. But if we're, if we're dealing with an, a run play that ends beyond the neutral zone and the fouls beyond the neutral zone, we're probably going to enforce it three and one. That's generally true. One of the exceptions to that or contact fouls by the team by team A behind the neutral zone. So for any of the following fouls by the offensive team behind the neutral zone, uh, the penalty is enforced at the previous spot. Legal use of hands, holding, legal block, personal fouls, any of those occur, we will enforce at the previous spot as the basic enforcement spot, even if they occurred five yards in the backfield, provided they did not occur in A's end zone. Because if they incur an A's end zone, the penalty there is a safety. Here are some examples of that. Third and 10 at A's four yard line. We have a completed pass, a gain up to A's 20 yard line. Prior to the pass, we have offensive holding either at A's two or an A's end zone. Well, the foul occurred at A's two, that's in the field of play. We're going to enforce that penalty at the craft the distance to the goal from the previous spot. And it's going to be third and 12 at the two. But in the second example, since that foul occurred in A's end zone, the result of the penalty enforcement is going to be a safety. Another example here, second and five at B's 40, incomplete pass. Prior to the pass, we have a chop block at the 43 yard line. Again, enforcement here is from the previous spot because the fouls occurred in the back there. Questions about any of that stuff? All right, PSK stuff. BSK enforcement is only applicable if all of the following statements are true. Foul occurs during a scrimmage kick. Kick is not a try, a successful field goal, or in an extra period. The ball crosses the neutral zone, and Team B will next put the ball in play. If all of those things are true, it's a post-scrimmage kick foul. It has post-scrimmage kick enforcement, and the basic enforcement spot is the end of the kick. If we're missing any of those criteria, it's just a foul during a scrimmage kick play, and the basic enforcement spot is the previous spot. Here's an example. Fourth and 12 at A's 40. While A1's punt is in the air, B6 holds A43 either at B's 35 or B's 15. Kick is fair caught at B's 25. Well, in the first example, the kick ended in advance of the spot of the foul. So we'd, we'd use the three and one principle to enforce this holding foul as a PSK foul. So we'll go to the spot of the foul, uh, 10 yards from there, and it'll be B's ball first and 10. In the second example, since the fair catch was behind the spot of the foul, again, using the three and one principle here, we just go to the end of the kick and enforce the penalty half the distance to the goal from there. Pretty straightforward. Uh, fourth and seven at B's 49, while the punt's in the air, B65 blocks A15 in the back at B's 20. Ball's muffed by B17 and recovered at the 15-yard line, either by B6 or A14. While it's recovered by B6, it's a post-scrimmage kick foul. Meets PSK criteria, so we would enforce that penalty uh, from the spot, uh, the end of the kick, which is the 15-yard line. We go half the distance to the goal, the first and 10 for B at the seven and a half. However, when A has the ball, not a post scrimmage kick foul anymore. It's just a foul during a scrimmage kick play. In this particular case, it's much better for A to decline the penalty to keep the ball than it is to have the penalty enforced at the previous spot because it's a difference of about 30, 25, 30 yards. Questions there? Cool. Here are some other commonly called fouls that don't necessarily meet any of the specific criteria we've talked about before. Um, but they are important. DPI. 
less than 15 yards from the previous spot, A's ball at the spot of the foul. More than 15 yards, A's ball 15 yards in the previous spot. Not subject to half the distance enforcement, right? We know that. So if we have a we have the, we set the ball anywhere between B17 and B's two, and the penalty is beyond B's two, it's going to be A's ball at B's two. We have DPI. The exception to that, if we once we get down on either on a try at the three or inside B's two on a regular down, DPI is now half the distance. So if we're on a try down and we have DPI in the end zone, we're going to the one and a half yard line, provided we're snapping the ball at the three. If we don't snap the ball at the three. Half the distance, the, our half distance principle here doesn't apply. Easy example. B17 is inter, interferes with A16 and B's end zone. The ball was snapped to B's 30, B's 10, or B's 2. Well, on the first example, full 15. Going to the 15 yard B's, B's ball, or excuse me, A's ball first and 10 at B's 15. In the second example, since we snap between the 17 and the 2, we're going to the 2. And then third example, half the distance automatic first down in all cases. Kick catch interference, uh, for almost all kick catch interference fouls, 15 yards from the spot of the foul, uh, B keeps the ball. If we have kick catch interference on a free kick play against a player who is signaled for a fair catch behind B's 25 yard line, we basically award them the fair catch and put the ball to 25 and then enforce the penalty. So in that case, we'd go to the 40 yard line. Kick, uh, KCI behind the goal line, it's a touchback plus 15 yards. So on a free kick, we'd go 25 and then 15 more yards, although I'd, I'd be impressed by the guy who was able to commit kick catch interference against his opponent on the end zone on a free kick. He's probably pretty fast. I want him to have the ball a lot. Um, but on a punt play, that happens. It's touchback plus 15. Fouls during or after a touchdown field goal or try. If it's a foul by the non-scoring team, and it's a personal foul or an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, that penalty can be enforced on the try or the kickoff at the offended team's option. Five and 10 yard penalties are declined by rule unless illegal touching of the kick uh, makes enforcement possible. Talk about some illegal touching stuff here in a few minutes. I talked about DPI on tries or on or inside beast three, so I'm not gonna hit that again other than say it's half the distance. If we have a foul after the try, but before the ready for play on the try, where we have a live ball foul and forces a dead ball foul on the touchdown play, those penalties can still be enforced on either the try or the kickoff at the offended team's option. If the field goal is successful, they can either cancel the score or enforce at the previous spot, or they can accept the score and have a personal foul or UNS enforced at the succeeding spot, but not a five or 10 yard penalty. So it's just DOF on a successful field goal it's either three points and no enforcement or no points and five yards in the previous spot. Again, live enforced is dead or dead ball fouls after the field goal, go to the, go to the succeeding spot. I have not had this happen to me in a game, but it's had to happen someplace. If there are any series of penalties that occur that would place either team's free kick line behind their own five yard line, uh, they are enforced at the next succeeding spot following the kickoff. So if we had, I don't know, a touchdown by A and then a series of unsportsmanlike, like four unsportsmanlike conduct penalties that put the ball back and would move it, the ball inside the five yard line. That last one, we kind of put, put in our pocket and enforce it after the kickoff return. I don't suppose that's happened to anybody that's on the call. Here's a simple list of the loss of down fouls by A. This largely has not changed in number in the last several years, except for the new one. Uh, legal touching of a forward pass by an originally ineligible player, five-yard penalty uh, from the previous spot, loss of down. But a legal scrimmage kick, forward handing, planned loose ball, illegal forward pass, grounding, illegal touching, batting, kicking. Those are all our loss of downs, all right? Our automatic first down fouls by B, DPI, any personal foul, any unsportsmanlike -like iconic penalty, and again, new for this year, defensive holding, all right? Again, if it's defensive holding, it carries an automatic first down. Okay, that was the that was the easy stuff. So, please, if you are interested in playing the game, go to either launch the Kahoot app on your phone or go to Kahoot.it in your browser 
That's not the game code. Let me give you the game code. I will put it in the chat for everybody's benefit. Where is the chat? Uh, the game code is 3272044. So I'll wait a few minutes for people to jump on if they're going to jump on. Again, 3272044. As an added incentive for you to play and do well in this, the winner of this game will receive a, a drink on my behalf the next time we see each other. So I'm really rooting for those of you who I've either never met or will not see in person. I see people still jumping on. I'll give it another minute or two. So unlike other cahoots where the, I mean, you're gonna have plenty of time to answer these questions. You're gonna see the question, you're gonna see all the answers, and then I'm gonna say go, and you get like 10 seconds after that to pick, to pick, to make your choice. So not always smart of you to put your name in here as part of the game where I don't know who you are, because then I have plausible deniability as to who it is that actually won the cocktail. Stan's probably just going to claim it anyway. Stan's here, and I got no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, it, it's fine. I got the penalty stuff, but this Kahoot stuff is... That's fine. Don't, don't worry about it, Stan. We're all good. I'm not. Uh, no problem. Okay. So let's start with fouls on tries and an extra period. So prior to a change of possession, during a try or an extra period, foul by A is enforced as any other play with a replay of the down, except that if A commits a loss of down foul, the try just fails. No carryover enforcement, the try just fails if it's a loss of down foul. If it's a foul by B, we would enforce it as in any other play, but personal fouls and unsportsmanlike fouls can be enforced on the try, the kickoff, or the succeeding spot in, in extra periods. Um, but that depends a lot on the situation. Uh, specifically, uh, off the top of my head, I didn't make all the right notes in this. Um, yeah. In most cases, that is, that is true. If I think of a case where it's not true, off the top of my head, I will issue. So here's the first question. I'm about to start the game. During a try from B's three, A7 runs to B's two, retreats to B's seven, and throws a forward pass to A88, who catches the ball in B's end zone. Is the try successful with a free kick at ace 35? Is it an illegal forward pass with a retry at the eight? An illegal forward pass with a retry at B's 10? Or an illegal forward pass, the try fails and a free kick at ace 35? So here we go. I'm about to start the game part, the game portion here. Three, two, one. You'll have 10 seconds from now. All right, most of you got it right. Simply, simply put, there's a loss of down foul here because it's an illegal forward pass. Therefore, the try just fails with no carryover enforcement. Question number two. During a try from B's three, A22 takes the handoff and runs through the B gap on the right side of the formation and crosses B's goal line. A74 is flagged for holding at B's one. Try successful with a free kick at the 35, retry at B's 11, retry at B's 13, or try fails, free kick at A's 35. Go. Right, this penalty is a foul. A foul beyond the, we use the three and one principle here because the foul on the run ended beyond the neutral zone. So we go 10 yards from the spot of the foul and we just retry at the 11. All right. Question number three, during a try from B's three, B9 intercepts A7's pass and returns it to B's 15 where he's tackled. 
B79 was flagged for DOF at the snap. Try, success, try successful free kick at the 35. A retry at the B3, A retry at B's one and a half, or try fails free kick at the A35. Ready? Go. Right. This is a foul simultaneous with the snap, so our enforcement spot is uh, the previous spot. We'll reinforce that penalty, and we will we'll roll from there with a replay of the downs. During a try from B's three, A22 runs the ball into B's end zone. During the run, B92 grabs and twists his face mask. Try is successful only if A declines the face mask foul, or try is successful and free kick at the 50. Go. All right, this one's got carryover enforcement, right? Because it's a personal foul. Personal fouls can be enforced uh, from the succeeding spot. So we can enforce, we can keep the points and have that penalty attacked on and have a free kick 15 yards up. All right, so let's talk about after changes of possession. This is still talking about tries and, and extra periods, just so we're all on the same page. Still talking about tries and extra periods. If B did not get the ball with clean hands, that is to say without fouling, A keeps the ball. Um, I'm missing a thing here. Okay. All right, sorry, thought I missed something. So if B gets the ball with clean hands, A keeps the ball. If A fouled before or after B's gaining possession, um, then they, the fouls are just offset at the previous spot, right? So B gets the ball, they'd already fouled. A fouls at any point during the down. Those are just going to offset or replay the down to the previous spot. Uh, if A did not foul and B didn't get the ball with clean hands, a is going to accept the penalty for B's foul and have enforcement at either the previous spot or the end of the related run, depending upon the type of play and what the foul was. If B did get the ball with clean hands, then we just won't repeat the down, right? The down will not be repeated. Any foul by the scoring team cancels the score, and the penalty is declined by rule unless it's an unsportsmanlike conduct foul or a flagrant personal foul. So not just a personal foul, but something that raises to the level that we would have to throw somebody out of the game for it, all right? So just grabbing and tackling a guy by the face mask or clipping somebody is not enough for us to have carryover enforcement if B got the ball with clean hands on a try or an extra period. Offsetting fouls will cancel at the succeeding spot unless one of the two teams committed a flagrant personal foul or unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, in which case there's still no score but we would enforce that penalty at the succeeding spot. Does that make sense? So let's say we had, I'm probably jumping all over my own examples, but let's say we had DOF, or not DOF's a bad example. Let's say we had an interception during the return. We have holding by the return team, and then A decides that they're going to target somebody, decides to go crowd of the helmet targeting against the ball carrier. Even if B were to return that all the way for, for two points or for the touchdown and extra periods, the score would, would, go, would go away, but the holding would also not be enforced, but the targeting would still be enforced at the succeeding spot. So let's talk about some play examples. During a try from B's three, A7's pass is intercepted by B6 in B's end zone. He throws a pass to B7 who catches the ball at B's one and runs it into A's end zone. A retry at the three, A retry at the one and a half. B's illegal forward pass foul means the try fails and no one scores, free kick at the 35. Or B's illegal forward pass foul results in a one point safety for A, free kick at the 35. Ready? Go. So remember, our principles here say that this penalty is not going to result in a safety. There basically is no foul by B that they can commit after they gain possession 
in, in a, on a try or an overtime that will result in a safety. The only enforcement option for the foul uh, is if it's a personal foul, a flagrant personal foul or UNS would be from the succeeding spot. In this case, B got the ball with clean hands. So all that happens is the try fails and we move on. All right, first series of the first extra period. Second and 10 at B's 25. A7's pass is intercepted by B16 at B's five. During the return, B75 is flagged for blindside block at B's 20. B16 fumbles the ball at the 30 and the fumble is recovered by A17 who returns the fumble to B's five. First and goal for A at B's two and a half. First and 10 for A at B's 12 and a half. First and 10 for B at A's 25. Or first and 10 for B at A's 40. Right. So it's a blindside block. It's a blindside block, but a blindside block is not a flagrant personal foul. So there's no carryover enforcement. All that happens is that A series is over. We move to the second possession series of the extra period. It's B's ball, first and 10 at A's 25. I, this always goes without saying in these presentations, but if you have any questions about any of this, don't hesitate to speak up and ask them before we move on. Number seven. First series of the first extra period. Again, second and 10 at B's 25. A7's pass is intercepted by B16 at B's five. During the return, uh, B75 is flagged for an unsportsmanlike for taunting at B's 20. B16 fumbles the ball at B's 30. Fumble is recovered by A17, who returns the fumble to B's five. First and goal for A at the B's two and a half. First and 10 for A at B's 12 and a half. First and 10 for B at A's 25. We're first and 10 for B at A's 40. Ready, go. All right, so this, since it's an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, can be carried over in enforcement. But B got the ball with clean hands. Even though A got the ball back, B possessed the ball with clean hands, which means that unless A scores on this play, their possession series is over. So B is going to get the ball with a new series. The penalty for the UNS is going to be enforced at the, at the succeeding spot, which to start B's possession series in the extra period, it's going to be first and 10 at the 40. All right, number eight. First series of first extra period, again, second and 10 at B's 25. A has five players in the backfield at the snap. A7's pass is intercepted by B16 at B's five. During the return, B75 is flagged for taunting at B's 20. B16 fumbles the ball at B's 30, and the fumble is recovered by A17, who returns the fumble to B's five. A first and goal at B2 and a half, A first and 10 at B12 and a half, B first and 10 at A's 25, or B first and 10 at A's 40. Again, as, we, as I mentioned a few slides ago, since we do have a UNS or flagrant personal foul, that penalty is gonna be enforced. Even though A committed a foul, that penalty was a five or a 10, so it goes away. So we still have to enforce that UNS. We don't enforce the illegal formation. And it's gonna be again, first and 10 for B at A's 40. All right, that concludes the portion of the, of the game with the with the tries and extra periods. Stephen Clayton has a one point lead currently after seven or eight questions. So it's real tight. Let's talk about illegal, illegal touching of a kick and its impact on enforcement. So when A illegally touches a kick, B can elect to take the ball at the illegal touching spot. However, this option is canceled if there's an accepted penalty for a live ball foul by either team or if there are offsetting fouls. If A commits an illegal touching violation in B's end zone, we consider the spot of the violation to be B's 20. That is the enforcement spot uh, for a PSK foul, or excuse me, it's PSK spot for, PS, for a PSK foul uh, committed by B. 
but may not be the enforcement spot based on the spot specifically of the foul by B. Fouls by A, which are to be enforced from the spot where the dead ball belongs to B, are still enforced from the dead ball spot and not necessarily B's 20 if the penalty is accepted. So if A illegally touches the kick in the end zone, the ball runs out, it rolls out of bounds at the five, and A committed a penalty, it may be more beneficial for, a, for B to decline A's penalty and take a touchback than to enforce A's penalty from the five, because they don't get the touchback and the penalty in most cases. So for all of the following quiz questions, here is the sequence of events, okay? A illegally touches the kick, then B1 recovers the loose ball, then B1 fumbles, then A2 recovers B1's fumble. Now, to make it simple, I have a graphic, okay? So this should help, all right? So this is the sequence of events on all these plays. Kick, illegal touch, recovery, uh, after the illegal touch, run and fumble, recovery by A, play ends, okay? I'm gonna leave, this graphic will always be on the screen for all these questions to make it a little help, to make it helpful for people, I think. I could be wrong. All right, so let's say there's a foul in the segment which follows the illegal touching but precedes the recovery of the loose ball, okay? If it's a personal, and you'll see this, this chart recurs as well. Uh, a can keep a touchdown and have the penalty for a personal foul enforced on either the try or the kickoff, okay? A five or 10 yard penalty by B can still be enforced at the previous spot, however, due to illegal touching, all right? Because in the same, again, all these plays have the same sequence. Kick, illegal touch, recovery by B, fumble by B, recovery by A, play ends. So I'm speaking, when I'm talking about that, I'm, I'm using that graphic as the, as the whole thing. So as you can see here, if there's a personal foul by B and A2 scores a touchdown, A keeps the touchdown and can have carryover enforcement on the try or kickoff. I have this on a sheet of paper that I will share with everybody on the call and put it in the comments on the YouTube video too to make it easy for people. So if you hold tight, I will put it in the chat later. If however, A2 is stopped short of B's goal line and there's a personal foul by B, A can keep the ball, but the only way to keep the ball is to enforce the penalty at the previous spot. Because if they decline the penalty and there was no penalty, then B could take the ball at the spot of illegal touching and, wouldn't, and A wouldn't keep the ball. If it's just a holding by B during the kick, either B can take the ball and A2 scores a touchdown. It could be B's ball at the touching spot, but it's much more likely going to be A's ball with the penalty enforced at the previous spot. And the same principle would apply uh, if A2 doesn't score. Um, if the personal foul or the holding is by A during the kick um, and A2 scores a touchdown, B can either take the ball at the illegal touching spot or return the ball to A with enforcement of the penalty at the previous spot, which would still make it fourth down. Does that make sense? If A2 doesn't score, B again could take the ball at the illegal touching spot or could have the penalty enforced the previous spot, making it A's ball again, still fourth down. Clear? You know, if we have a, we have a let's say we have a block below the waist against the kicking team, right? and A illegally touches the kick and B recovers and then they fumble and A recovers. Well, B is not in possession at the end of the down, right? So that means it's not a post scrimmage kick foul. It can't be a post scrimmage kick foul. So at that point, the only enforcement option is the previous spot. Now, if we do that, it's still gonna be A's ball, but it's still gonna be fourth down or whatever down they kicked on if they didn't kick on fourth down. It may be better for B to just take the ball at the spot of illegal touch, but that's the choice yeah. B gets. Okay, in these examples, the foul is now in the, run, in the segment during, after B1 has recovered the kick and prior to B1's fumble, okay? So here, if there's a personal foul during B1's run and A2 happens to get the ball back and score a touchdown, again, they keep the touchdown, they can have the personal foul enforced on the try or the kickoff. Um, if they don't score, it's going to be B's ball because either A will decline the penalty and give B the ball at the spot of illegal touching, or enforcing the penalty will be enforced, the penalty is enforced three and one on the run, basically. Uh, but there's no way A is gonna get the ball there. 
if it's holding by B during the run, even if, if A2 scores a touchdown, they still don't get the touchdown because the foul occurred during B's run. So either they decline the penalty, which means B gets the ball at the illegal touching spot, or they accept the penalty, which means it's an again enforced three and one uh, during from the from B's uh, the spot of the, the foul enforcement uh, during B1's run. And again, hey, Nick, I got a question. Go ahead, Ryan. On that touch, A2 score touchdown, they can still keep the touchdown on the and be penalized afterwards on the try or the if, kickoff? If it's a personal foul, yes. If there's okay. a personal foul on the play by the opponent of the scoring team, that kind of trumps all these other rules, right? That's the most important part of that is that there's a foul on the score, personal foul or UNS uh, by an opponent of the scoring team. It doesn't matter when during the down that foul occurred. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, now Nick, this is yep. Stan. What did you say about the hold? What was the next play? You said like if A held on it. Uh, uh, not if not no. if A held. If B held. If B held, right? B held. If okay. B holds during B. All right. Run, well, go ahead. Yeah. Well, my que my question was going to be, um, I, well, what was your answer? And then I'll tell you my question. That other question came in a little too quick, so I missed. I sort of missed the play here. Uh, okay. Instead of a personal foul. If it's just a hold, um, is your question, right? It's going to be just a hold, and isn't a hold defined by rule on a scoring play? Well, because there's a legal touching, there are options for enforcement. You sure about that? They change. I'm not. That's why I'm asking. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about that. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's not a personal foul, and it's a foul by the non-scoring team. And I always thought those were declined by rule. There are certain cases where that foul can be enforced depending on time of the foul and where it's at. Uh, it Those can be enforced um, like at the previous spot, for instance, if it's during the kick. It can be enforced no matter if a a uh, if B scores or not, so it's not a thousand percent that we're. It, it says in the rule, I believe it says like unless can, unless penalty can be enforced without conflict of rules, something like that. Yeah, it doesn't come up. I don't know that it comes up a ton, Stan. Um, okay. But the the situation in which that you're talking about, in my opinion would apply to if that foul by B was a five or 10 yard foul and it occurred during a two's run that led directly to a score because that foul can't be enforced, right? Because if that there's no place to enforce that penalty from if A scores, right? You know what I'm saying? So what, Eric, let's put a pin in this for a second because I'm gonna get to this example here in a couple of minutes, in like a minute, okay, That's Sam? Fine. Okay. Yeah, no, you're doing great, keep it up. And then uh, if, a, if we have personal fouls or defensive holds by A during, thanks, Fultz found a reference for you, Stan, 10-2-5-A-2, 10-2-5-A-2. Um, if the fouls are by A, then it's always going to be B's ball in all cases, and that penalty is going to be enforced from the end of B1's run in all cases, regardless of what it is, because that foul occurred during the segment of, of the play that was B1's run. Doesn't matter what the foul is. Everybody clear on that? Now, Stan, to your point that we were talking about earlier, let me advance this here. Now we're talking about a foul that occurs after A2 has recovered the kick and is advancing. This is what I think you were talking about. So if A2 scores a touchdown on a personal foul by B during A2's run, again, touchdown, enforcement on the try or kickoff. If A doesn't score, we can enforce that penalty from the end of the related run because that's how, you know, that's how three and one would work there. But if that foul were something like OH is a bad example, but let's say it's a, let's say it's a block in the back. I, there aren't a lot of great examples of here that are five or 10 yards on this particular type of play, but you'll have to bear with me. Let's say we had a block in the back or something like that. In that case, that penalty is declined by rule because there's no place to enforce it. If A scores a touchdown there and it's a five or 10 yard foul by B, 
we have to decline that penalty by rule because we can't, there's no, we are not able to enforce that. The rules do not allow for us to enforce that five or 10 yard penalty. If that's the case, then there is no accepted penalty. And the only thing to do is give B the ball at the illegal touching spot, right? Stan, I think that's more what you were talking about a few minutes ago. Well, I think you're, no, I, I think you're, you're on it. And that, that um, rule reference was good. It does mention uh, exactly what, uh, what was said. Oh, thanks. No, oh, that, that, that's good. And then uh, again, if A2 doesn't score, A can still keep the ball with penalty and force the end of the related run. Now, if these are A fouls, all that's going to end up happening is B is going to want the ball at the illegal touching spot. Because B is going to decline the penalty for A's foul. And if the penalty is declined, then B gets the ball at illegal touching. That's it. Okay. So talking through all those things, it's important to know who's the foul on, does A score or not, and in what segment of the play did the foul occur? So now we get into the game. So if you were playing the game, be ready to play the game some more. If you're new to the game, it's kahoot.it. The game pin is 327-2044. Feel free to jump in if you like. Here's question number nine. Fourth and five at A's 40. A5 illegally touches the ball at B6. B7 recovers the loose ball at B's 10 and returns the ball to B's 20 where he fumbles. A6 recovers the fumble and run in, runs into B's end zone. During the kick, B17 holds A5. Touchdown for A, try at the three. Touchdown for A, try at the one half. A's ball first and 10 at the 50 or B's ball first and 10 at the three. Ready, go. All right. So this would be A's ball first and 10 at the 50, because it's a, it's a foul that would otherwise meet post scrimmage kick criteria, except that B is not in legal possession at the end of the down, which means there is an enforcement option here. And so that penalty can be enforced at the previous spot. So we go give A the ball back and it'll be first and 10 of the 50. Everybody clear on that? They, knew they yep. won't uh, accept the touchdown. Pardon? They won't uh, accept the touchdown if they scored? They can't accept the touchdown because this isn't a personal foul. So if they're gonna, so the only way for them to keep the ball is to accept the penalty. And the only place for them to accept the penalty and have it enforced from is the previous spot. Okay, thank you. Because they'd have to decline the penalty to make it a touchdown. If they decline the penalty, B gets the ball at the spot of first touch or illegal touch, excuse me. Okay, question number 10. Fourth and five at A's 40. A5 illegally touches the ball at B's six. B7 recovers the loose ball at B's 10 and returns the ball to B's 20 where he fumbles. A6 recovers the fumble and runs into B's end zone. During the kick, B17 clips A5. Touchdown. B's ball at the six, B's ball at the five, B's ball at the three. Go. Touchdown. This clipping's a personal foul. Therefore, it can be enforced. Right, A can keep the points and have the penalty enforced. So this is a touchdown with enforcement on the try or the kickoff. Question 11, fourth and five at A's 40. A5 illegally touches the ball at B6. B7 recovers the loose ball at B's 10, returns the ball to B's 20 where he fumbles. A6 recovers the fumble and runs into B's end zone. During B7's run, A5 trips B5. Touchdown. B's ball at the 20, B's ball at the six, B's ball at the 35. Those are your choices. Go. This is gonna be B's ball at the 35 yard line. This is fouled by A. It occurred during the part of this kick, or this, this kick return that is the run play. Uh, so it's basic enforcement spot is the end of the related run, which is the spot of the fumble. B will keep the ball 
after enforcement. Okay, moving on. Timing fouls. That was the last two minutes. If the clock is stopped to complete a penalty by the team ahead in the score or either team in a tie game, the offended team has the option to start the clock on the snap if it would have otherwise started on the ready for play. There is, remember, there is no option to start the, uh, to start the clock on the ready for play if the place, if the results of the play indicate it should start on the snap. All right, this only works one way. Some crews I've worked with have called this the snapshot. You'll hear that over the O2O sometime. Like, hey, uh, Cincinnati has snapshot here in the last two minutes. Let's talk about the runoff. 10 seconds of traction applies if the game clock is running in less than one minute and a half. Any foul that prevents the snap, such as a false start, encroachment, offsides with contact, et cetera, intentional grounding, incomplete illegal forward pass, an illegal backward pass, or any other foul committed either with the intent of stopping the clock or that has the effect of stopping the clock immediately, such as like a dead ball, UNR, or unsportsmanlike conduct penalty if the clock was running. Um, it is worth noting that since one minute is less than two minutes for all you math majors out there, um, any of the, foul, uh, the rules that pertain to fouls in the last two minutes also apply to fouls in the last minute if they don't also fall into the 10 second runoff category. So we might be, for, you know, if a team in the lead hold, uh, commits a holding foul with 45 seconds remaining and the clock would have otherwise started on the ready for play, the trailing team could still let to have the clock start on the snap, even though the runoff option is not in effect. You know, we just run a play, there's holding on the play, the guy gets tackled. We could still enforce the snap, the snapshot choice, even though the runoff is off the table. There are some non-foul situations that include injuries, helmets off, and replay runoff. Um, note that if the replay review results in the on-field ruling being reversed and the correct ruling would not have stopped the game clock, they'll reset the, the clock to the time the ball should have been declared dead, and then the referee will subtract 10 seconds unless either team takes a timeout. Uh, as a reminder, the replay runoff cannot be declined, but either team can take a time off, a timeout to avoid it. Teams don't get the choice to decline the replay runoff. Otherwise, I can't imagine a single team who wouldn't take advantage of that in most cases. I'm going to skip these plays to keep us moving. So here's the next question. Third and five at B's 25. 45 seconds in the second quarter. A3 runs to B's 23, returns to B's 27 and throws a pass to A88, who's standing in B's end zone. The ball is tipped into the air by B8 and lands incomplete with 32 seconds remaining. This foul is eligible for the runoff, is not eligible for the runoff, or what foul? Those are your three choices. This foul is eligible for the runoff. Why is it eligible for the runoff? Because it's an illegal forward pass and it was incomplete, right? It doesn't have to be immediately incomplete. It just happens to be incomplete. It's a legal forward pass and it's incomplete. Number 13, third and five at B's 25, 45 seconds of second quarter. A3 runs to B's 23 where he's tackled with 38 seconds remaining. After the play, A75 knocks B91 to the ground. Eligible for the runoff? Not eligible for the runoff, what foul? Those are your three choices. Again, we are eligible for the runoff. This UNR stopped the running clock in the last minute. It has that effect, so we are eligible to, to enforce the runoff here. Third and five at B's 25, 45 seconds remaining in the second quarter. A3 runs to B's 19, where he's tackled with 36 seconds remaining. After the play, A75 knocks B91 to the ground. Eligible for the runoff, not eligible for the runoff. What foul? Those are your choices. This foul is not subject to the runoff. Why is this foul not subject to the runoff, uh, Julie? Because we stopped for a first down. Bingo. We stopped the clock already for a first down. So we do not have the option for the runoff. The clock was not otherwise running. 
Hey, Nick, um, and if you're going to go over this, then uh, just to, uh, just go over it when you go over it. But if, if we have a injury or a helmet off on the same team that commits a penalty that causes the clock to stop, but we have the 10 second runoff for that, correct? Yes. So if A gets hurt and A throws an incomplete illegal forward pass, the 10 second is eligible, correct? This is the part of this that I'm, I'm I think is correct, um, but I, I hate this stuff because they, they I don't think the rule was written particularly clearly when they when they put all that stuff together. I, I, I believe I agree. Blandino said no. It's got to be clean, is I what the Blandino I said that, last year, and it, messed, I, I it was on the CFO he's test. Referring to though, when Dean says that, I think that's only replay runoffs. Blandino put out a memo that said if more than one thing happens, there is no eligibility for a 10 second runoff. Okay. Correct. All right. So even if it's be... on, even if it's on both teams, you mean the same yes. team? You're talking about the same team, right, Richard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same team. Right. So, a helmet same off. Team. If it's a same, runner. A gets helmet off. A throws it out of bounds, and A throws an illegal forward pass, incomplete. No That's runoff. El no runoff. No runoff. I don't know why, but that is what Blandino came out with I, in the statement last. I, I also agree with Nick. This is this is in previous years. This is really, really, really poorly worded. Yes, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. And it, it does it, not. It doesn't. <laughs> not, not one. Not one bit. Yeah. So, but if we have three helmets off and that's it by a, that's still a runoff because they're all the same type. Right. Or if we have three fouls that are all runoff fouls, then we can because it's clean. So that's that's how that's how he described it. Not saying I agree with it, but that's that's what he came out with. Yeah. Okay. I, I do remember. I do recall that now that now that everybody's brought it up. So thank you. That's why we're all here for that. So if there are more than one category, if we check off more than one category here, there is no eligibility for a runoff. That should be the takeaway. We have a helmet off and a foul. Helmet off and so, an same team. Go ahead, Richard. What are you going to say? So if I'm on A. And I see my quarterback run past the line of scrimmage and throw a forward pass. I should immediately rip my helmet off and throw it to the ground, so they can all see that. And but not participate in the play anymore. So I, now I'm not eligible for the ten second runoff. They are still that... at. So yeah. I mean, okay. maybe that maybe that could happen. The likelihood of that happening maybe in the Ivy League. No, no, no. I, I know it's it's it's. I I would I would say it's pretty nil that that happens in the heat of the moment, but. Better chance of a guy all of a sudden cramping up and going down for an injury after he sees something, right? Yeah. The whole True. feigning injury stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Good conversation. Hopefully they fix it. I hope so, too. Nobody ever asks me these questions. All right. Let's talk about a few other unusual enforcement situations. Illegal wedge formation. 15 yards from the spot on a, on a free kick. 15 yards from the spot of the foul or 15 yards from the dead ball spot, whichever is worse for the kicking team. Okay, but this is not a foul that has previous spot enforcement. We will not re-kick this. If A is in possession at the end of the down, they would just decline the penalty. An illegal scrimmage kick causes the ball to become dead. If I carry the ball beyond the neutral zone and kick it, the ball's dead. Includes the scrimmage kick from beyond or the return kick, five yard penalties in both cases, but a, a scrimmage kick beyond the neutral zone is also a loss of down and has always enforced the previous spot, even if I ran 15 yards downfield and illegally kicked the ball. Um, illegal block after a fair catch signal on a free kick. This is new again, reduced to 10 yards unless there's also a personal foul here. But on a free kick, it is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Of note, if this foul occurs, it has to, it would have to, by definition, occur during the kick. But again, this does not have previous spot enforcement. This has enforcement uh, from the spot of the foul. Uh, the clean hands principle, basically, if the team in final possession hasn't fouled before gaining possession, they can decline their opponent's fouls and keep the ball, except for personal fouls and UNSs on touchdown plays, as we brought up a few, a few scenarios ago. If the team that commits a personal foul or UNS then turns the ball over and their opponent scores, the opponent can have the personal foul or UNS enforced on the try or kickoff and still keep the touchdown. They don't have to decline the penalty in that case. They'd have to decline a hold prior to the change of possession, 
but they would not have to decline a personal foul. So here's an example. Second and six at A's 40. A1's pass is intercepted by B7 at B's 45, a return for a touchdown. Prior to the interception, A65 holds B71 at A's 38. And during the return, B7 taunts A81 at A's 5. These fouls have to offset and A gets the ball back. These fouls cancel at the seeding spot, touchdown for B. B first and 10 at A's 20, or touchdown for B, UNS taunting and forced on the try or kickoff at A's option. Those are your choices. All right, in this case, B wants the ball. They can decline the penalty for the hold, but they still have to have the penalty for their UNS, live ball UNS enforced. In that case, it's going to be B's ball first and 10 and A's 20. Question 16, A second and six at A's 40. A1's pass is intercepted by B7 at B's 45, return for a touchdown. Prior to the interception, A65 clips B71 at A's 38. B has to decline the clip to keep the touchdown, or B can keep the touchdown and have the clip enforced. Those are your two choices. Go. That is right. This is a personal foul. So B can keep the touchdown and have the clipping enforced. If they had been tackled at the one, they'd have to decline the clipping to keep the ball. Football rules are weird sometimes. All right, let's talk a little bit about instant replay and enforcement. Here's the list of fouls that replay can create on their own. Legal forward pass or forward handoff. This includes if they have to reverse an on-field ruling of a backward pass. Player beyond the neutral zone when kicking the ball, blocking on a free kick before A is eligible to touch the ball. I would note here that if B is in possession at the end of the down, replay is not gonna stop the game unless there's a coach's challenge for this. So if A blocks early on the free kick, but B has the ball anyway, replay is not getting involved, right, Stan? Right. Um, more than 11 players on the field for either team during a live ball, legal touching of the forward pass, Either type is now reviewable. Um, a, legal, a player touching or recovering a kick or loose ball who, who is or has been out of bounds during the kick and a clear and obvious targeting foul. Those are all things replay can do by themselves without us having to say or do anything on the field. Here's an example. Uh, Nick, before we ask the question, um, would on the illegal forward pass, would replay come in if it was B? who was attempting the illegal, if it was a question of like they pitched it, if it was a question of whether it was illegal or legal forward pass? Yes. Okay. All, all, all illegal forward passes are subject to replay review. Okay. All right, question 17, free kick at A's 35. As A7's onside kick is bouncing at A's 43, uh, A14 initiates a block against B17 at A's 46. The kick is recovered by B16 at A's 47. There's no flag here on the play. Instant replay will, will stop the game and create the foul. Instant replay will only review if the coach challenges or there is no foul because the block was beyond 10 yards. As stated, the block is illegal because it, it was a block before A was eligible to touch the kick, but since B has the ball, replay is not gonna stop the game unless there's a challenge. Question 18, third and six at B's 40. A 14 goes out of bounds on his own and returns at B's 30 where he's first to touch the pass. Prior to his touching the pass, B eight contacts him early and the field judge throws a flag for DPI as the pass falls incomplete. No on-field official observes A14 go out of bounds. Replay will create a foul for illegal touching. This creates an offset with the defensive pass interference. Replay will create a foul for illegal touching. This causes the flag for DPI to be picked up, or replay cannot get involved with creating an illegal touching foul. Those are your three choices.
So in this case, replay will pick up the or will create the foul for illegal touching. That will cause the flag to be picked up because that player is ineligible and can be legally interfered with. Now, I will say if this had been a flag for DPI with targeting, the DPI part would be off, but the targeting could still be on. But just a regular PI would not be would not be enforced. All right, fouls replay can create based on the referee's announcement. Uh, ineligible downfield OPI DPI, assuming that the announcement by the referee indicates there's no foul due to the pass being touched behind the line or tipped. Replay can also pull the on-field officials off of those fouls if they can prove touching or tip pass. But they're not going to do that, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Jay, they're not going to do that unless if the touching is in the vicinity of the foul. It'd have to be way away from that, like near the line, correct? Like I, That's throw, correct. Flag, I throw a flag for DPI and the pass was touched two yards in front of that, you're not going to get involved with it. But if that pass were touched by a defensive lineman or something at the line of scrimmage, you'd pull us off of that. Yeah, the defender who's creating the DPI is is doesn't get to touch the ball to take him off it. Thank you. Um, running into or roughing the kicker. If the announcement indicates no foul due to the kick being touched or blocked near the kicker and replay can prove that it wasn't, we can put the foul on. Grounding. If the announcement indicates there's not a foul for grounding due to fumble, replay could then say, actually, it's a forward pass. And that makes it grounding because you said there was no foul for grounding because it was a fumble. I will say here, replay can also review the spot of, an, of a called grounding if it's close to the goal line and, and there's a safety potential. Um, but they can't otherwise review the spot of a foul, which is called on the field. That doesn't mean that they can't use their O2Os to indicate where the spot of the foul was, but that's not a replay stoppage. That's just helping your crew out. Um, I would also suggest this list is not total. I would, I would suggest, and, and, and Matty Ice, you can, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but basically if the announcement on the field indicates that there would have been a foul if not for X reviewable aspect, and you can prove the reviewable aspect, we could put the flag down, right? Yes. So if you were if you were on the call a couple of weeks ago when I showed that pass, that play from the game with the pass fumble and then the lineman tried to catch it and then the ball went out of bounds. If we had announced there's no foul for illegal touching of the pass because it was a fumble and replay could have proved that that was a, in fact a pass, we could have made that foul, we could have put that foul in the game. Replay wouldn't have created that foul necessarily. They would have just reversed the aspect of the play that made that a foul. So here are some examples. I think these are the last three questions. Second and 11 at B16. As A11 scrambles in the backfield, multiple and eligible linemen drift four or more yards downfield. A11 completes a pass at the A20 or two A24 at B15, who runs to B's four. After the umpire's flag is picked up, the referee announces there is no foul for an eligible player downfield because the pass was caught behind the line of scrimmage. Replay can create an, uh, an IDP based on the referee's announcement. Replay can create the IDP without the referee's announcement. There is no IDP because the pass was caught within a yard of the line of scrimmage or replay can't get involved at all with any ineligible downfield. Replay can create this foul. We have, because of the referee's announcement, the referee said that we didn't call this foul because the pass was caught, was touched behind. That's not true. Replay can prove that. We can put the flag down. Third and 12 at B's 40. As A7 is going to the ground at B's 49, the ball comes free from his hand. It is recovered by A75 at B's 41, who runs the 25 before being tackled. The referee makes no announcement. Replay indicates that A7's hand was moving forward when the ball came out. And since there were no eligible receivers in the area, intentional grounding is the correct, ru is the correct ruling. Replay can create grounding. They can't get involved in this play at all, or they can reverse the ruling to incomplete pass, but cannot create grounding in this situation.
So here, all replay can do is say, hey, that's not a fumble, that's a, that's a pass and it's incomplete. But since there was no announcement that said that we didn't call grounding because it was a fumble, that's all replay can do. They can't, we can't make this ING. All right, the last question here. Fourth and four A is 35. As A8, as A8 punts the ball, B97 crashes into him. The referee gives the tip signal to indicate the B97 contact the ball. B19 fair catches the kick, which came out wobbly off of A8's foot at B's 45. The referee announces that there is no foul for roughing the kicker since the kick was touched. The replays indicate that the ball was not touched. Replay can create the foul based on the announcement. They can create the foul without the announcement or they can't get involved in rulings about running into or roughing the kicker. So this is a, this is a situation that replay can get involved with and create the foul. All right. Let's talk about some, some quick mechanic stuff and then we'll wrap it up for the evening. Calling official, when you got a flag down, if you're the only flag, give a prelim, unless there are multiple flags down, move your flags to the right spot. If there are multiple flags for the same foul, uh, put all the flags in the same spot before you, uh, before you do anything. If enforcement is obvious, just defending player's number after the signal, let the referee earn their money by flipping their mic on and, and looking nice for television. Referees, no prelim if enforcement's obvious, just move to announcement. If the options required, quick prelim, use your wing officials, either deeps or short wings, talk to the offended coach, get the choice. There's usually no need to confer with the center judge or umpire in a crew of seven on enforcement of the penalty. Uh, center judges in crews of eight or umpires in crews of seven has a primary responsibility for marking all marking off all penalties and make sure you know enough about enforcement so we can enforce them without, with as minimal involvement from the referee as possible. Line of scrimmage officials, if you're with the chains, you walk off with whichever official is physically enforcing the, enforcing the penalty, whether that's the center judge in eight or the umpire in seven. Whoever's opposite the chains holds the spot until that official and the other wing have walked it off, then walk it off with the umpire if it's an eight official crew or by yourself if it's a seven official crew. Umpires and crew of eights and crews of eight, you walk it off with the press box wing to make sure enforcement is correct. Deep officials, I don't know, make sure everybody else is doing the right thing. You know, what you normally do in place. Make sure you got the clock status. That's all I got, except I do want to announce congratulations to our, to our big game winner and lucky me, because I probably am never going to have to buy this guy a drink. Richard Chadwell. And I can only assume that that's uh, Foltz in second place based on my knowledge of big things. So I know we went a little long tonight, but I wanted to try to get all the penalty enforcement stuff in as a refresher for everybody before we go into the CFO and your, your various clinic tests. Um, as I pointed out, my plan is probably to do CFO test reviews the week after the 4th of July, not the week of the 4th of July, because I have to, I have my clinic travel and then I've got some family travel planned. I will get those dates out as soon as I can, but that will be our next meeting. We'll probably go back to back nights just to try to get all the questions out before the, the test comes due. I expect the test will be out here next week. I think that's what they, that what they announced. When I get the PDF copy, I will send it out to everybody so you can start working on it so we can kind of nail, knock things out during, uh, during our calls. Uh, after that, uh, in two weeks, follow, either two weeks after that or the next week after that, Richard is, Chadwell is going to lead us on a, uh, a is it two minute mechanics and two minute timing stuff? Is that what your presentation is about, Richard? I don't have, I have too many windows open right now. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh -huh. Okay, great. So we got the last two minute stuff. <laughs> great. So we have that to look forward to. Obviously, we're still looking for people who are interested in presenting down the road past that. Um, but that's all I got for tonight. I appreciate people sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I hope you enjoyed the quizzes. I have a question. Uh, yes, Bill. All right. So we have a punt and it's fair caught at the 25 and the hold is at the 15 behind where the ball is fair caught. Mm -hmm. It isn't all PSK on fair catches where that ball is caught. 
because that post scrimmage kick spot is where that that spot is possessed. So that is the that is the post scrimmage kick spot, but the penalty is still in force three and one with the with that fair catch spot that you referred to as the as the basic spot. And since in this case the foul is behind the basic spot, we would still go to the spot of the foul half the distance to the goal. All right, I'm just not comprehending that. That just doesn't make common football sense. Well, we can, we, you and I can chat about that later. Okay, perfect. Other questions? All right, everybody, that's all I got. Um, I will see you all in a couple of weeks. Enjoy the, enjoy the 4th of July holiday. I, I hope you all travel safely to whenever, wherever and whenever your clinics are. And I look forward to seeing you all here in a few weeks to go over the CFO test. So take care. Okay.